Chat, what's up? YouTube, what's up, man? Anybody listen to this on the SoundCloud, I appreciate you. You guys asked for SoundCloud all year. Then when I put it up, I get eight views per week. So I hope you eight views really are, you know, using them to the best of your abilities, man. This is the Needed Podcast, episode 35. And what's crazy is that we had the beta. We played it all weekend. So we got a lot to talk about and a lot for you guys to help us talk about. And for that, I brought in my guy Kent and, of course, Clef the God, the second best man player in the world. (laughs) <laughs> and so I mean at, also at the end of this I also have the Fracture Me giveaway I told you guys I'm giving away those glass pictures last week and I do have those before so I'll give them away at the end so if you guys in the chat are not here I'll give you a chance to go ahead and retweet this tweet that way you can be eligible pick out some some free glass some free gift cards to that and give you a great opportunity to get some pictures so many times we just have pictures on the internet it's a great way to have your pictures pretty much you know in the physical form, man. So we're going to start this easily, man. And first, I got to ask you guys your initial reaction. I mean, we had it out for Friday, I believe, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Actually, a pretty decent time, you know, and I was actually a mutthead from Friday to Saturday, so I didn't play it as much as you guys. I'm going to start with Clef, man. People want to know what you think, uh, as you were probably the best man player in the year for, like, the last four months, without a doubt. Uh, what were your initial reactions to this beta? Uh, I thought the game was good. Mm-hmm. I thought the beta, it, it showed that they worked on the game longer than in previous years. Playing NAS last year and then playing the beta this year, there wasn't that much wrong with the game. There was two things like the, the pass leads and maybe the quarterback winding up. Besides that, I thought everything was So you felt excited about the game. What about you, Ken? How did you feel as being – you are pretty much our – you know, average to below average man player in the group. You know? so <laughs> that's kind of so. Sometimes okay. we need that view. I mean, it's a lot of times people don't really look for me and Clef's opinions because we're so good at the game that it you know it's, it's a little harder to take our opinion. But from an average Joe standpoint, you are little Johnny down the street, Kent. What did you think yep. about the game? So initial reaction, which is like my initial reaction every time I pop Madden out for the first time, it's like the game's a mess. I hate it. I don't like well, it. Why is that? Why is that your initial opinion? Because you're you're not comfortable with it. You're not. Oh, okay. you, it, it moves differently. Routes feel different. Like timing, just it's just different, right? Mm-hmm. So you're, you're not as good as what you're coming off playing Mad 19 is how you felt on that. So that's always. But after that, after you get past that, because you always feel that way, um, I thought the game played very well. I, I'm very encouraged by playing the beta. The beta, as far as what this uh, Madden's going to be like this year. Okay. Now you, as a person that used to be good at Madden got older you know and haven't been locked in on the game that much kind of because you haven't enjoyed the game so you're excited is this going to make you want to lock in more on Madden 20 yeah no i'm definitely like i said definitely encouraged by it it's definitely gonna um keep me around for a little bit longer i feel like i mean but it's also too early to tell we could two weeks into this find the next swerve glitch in this game and Mm -hmm. it'll ruin the whole thing so as it's playing right now with nobody knowing anything about what works, what's glitchy, what's not. Um, it, it feels good. Okay, okay. Now, like I asked everybody, now I want to ask you guys, man, what are some of your main positives and negatives that, you know, we could talk about in the next half hour to hour? And, Clef, I'm going to start with you, what your main positives were. Positives. Um, I think the game is, is a lot for more, you know what I'm saying? People complain about creativity. Mm-hmm. Now, okay, if you want to play a certain style, you can play that style. The teams allow you to play that style. I think allowing Brady to be usable, mm-hmm. I think that's huge. I think that's definitely very, very – I think man man being good, man being better, I think that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Usable. Uh, at least. It's at least usable. It's at least Usable. Uh, the previous years, last year, you couldn't really use it without being scared of getting given up. So, and I think the zones were, were better than people say. I think the zones played where they should play. Mm-hmm. So, those those are my positives on the game. All right, all right, Kent. What you think as far as positives? Uh, I probably agree with a lot of what Clef said. Um, I only played as the Patriots and just went into quick games online, just mm-hmm. beat the brakes off of everybody that came my way. Mm-hmm. But, um. I didn't realize that Brady had like a unique skill set with the uh, hot routes uh, and making. He has the ability to put 
you know, a tight end on more routes, running back on more routes, receivers on more routes. I thought that was just a feature they added for every quarterback in the game. So after seeing some of the community feedback on it, I obviously quickly realized that it was unique to Brady. I think it's an awesome addition. So, and I think it's going to actually allow for a huge skill gap that hasn't existed um, in Madden for quite basically since you could route pull. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm excited to play the game with basically a full arsenal of what I want to dial up as a play for what I'm seeing on the field versus having to pick a, a what handicap from a playbook standpoint that I'm going to give mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. Well, let's, let's talk, we'll, we'll talk about Brady in a little bit, but all right, since that's stay with kept, man, what, what are some negatives that you took away from, you know, the couple games that you played? Was there anything you didn't like that was new to this year? <sighs> Uh, here's what I don't like coming out of the huddle when I'm on defense mm-hmm. that like it right out the gate. You can tell if, if I came out as a three shell, okay. two shell, no, right? No, I had that same problem, but I was told there's a feature where you can put automatic baseline in. Uh, so so right. once I've realized there was a feature in coach suggestions where I could put automatic, cause I thought the same way I hated it. Uh, but, I was like yes. every play on defense. I, I felt like vulnerable because i was like i just told him what coverage i'm in yeah that's i mean I, I felt the same way um as far as that was concerned but then once i was told that it was a automatic baseline feature that was below uh auto flip i believe that's when i realized mm-hmm. you know that i'm cool okay. i gotta try it out that way and yeah. that wasn't that big a deal but any other negatives you thought that you didn't like about this so that was the big one for me mm-hmm. that, that really bugged me um I'm trying to think. There wasn't too much I dislike. Oh, a couple guys touched on it when you asked the question earlier on Twitter today. But um, the clock runoff when you go to hurry up. That I mean, I did it right before half, thinking I had plenty of time, and then oh shit, I gotta kick this field goal now because I just milked the shit out of myself. Mm-hmm. But um, so I, I, that just doesn't feel right. Um, in that situation, and then I think just the ability for the offense to like I said, with Brady, I can come out of the huddle, have my whole, you know, change seven different assignments by the time I hike it, whereas I don't feel like the defense had enough time to make the adjustments. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Clef, what do you think as far as negatives? Um, I think, like you said, the going right to the line, I really didn't like I like to see, I like to walk up and see the defense and see what's, what's going on. So, me personally, I didn't really – I think it might have been a negative – to me, it's not that it's not a huge problem, but I I, I would look at it as a negative. Mm-hmm. Um, guys not animating on defense, like I missed a lot of picks where it's like my dude, the ball just went right through his hands. Mm-hmm. And then the pass, you know, you can pass lead something to try to make it open, and then it's just it's like an overthrow. So I thought that was bad. And then um, so here's what I think about that though. I just think that's going to be something that we. Uh, figure out as we play more of the game. The passing? Yeah, like before it used to be like if you wanted to pass lead it to the right, you just held hard right and it would just automatically determine what that pass lead was, right? It was a prefix pass lead to the right. Now maybe it's going to incorporate a little bit of touch on that stick to where depending on where you're at in the route and where you want to throw it, like you got a sensitivity. I think it might be playing into the sensitivity. See, I think you triple. See, I think Little Johnny down the street isn't going to want to have to, you know, just do the stick 50% rather than all the way. Pause on all this, yeah, this yeah, stick yeah. talk. But <laughs> he doesn't want to, you know what I'm saying? I think, I, think, I think that'd be cool. That'd be really tough. Like, you do, like, a light uh, pass lead and then a real husky pass lead if they're in a lot of coverage. I mean, I think that'd be a great idea. But then again, we, we have to think about who who we're targeting here. They're not targeting, you know, Joystick right. Jesus. They're targeting little Johnny, and I don't think he wants to do that. I mean, but one thing about the quarterback that I, I've always thought, I thought the quarterback's always been way too good in Madden. You know, <laughs> like, the quarterback is automatic on point, especially with these rack eggs this year. Like, they're open, but it's just because it's such a perfect throw, man, on everything. And that, that's pretty much a – I mean, I guess as a competitive person, I want my quarterback to pretty much be automatic all the time. And do the same thing all the time, but at the end of the day, you got to balance it between real life, where a quarterback a, sometimes the quarterback is the person that beats man coverage, not necessarily the wide receiver, or the quarterback the throw that he makes gets the wide receiver open, and and that's and the quarterback's pretty much always been 
amazing on uh, Madden. And, and if he messes up a little bit, uh, maybe that's a little bit of a balance, especially those lesser tier quarterbacks. But I did feel like I only used Brady as well, and I, I didn't seem like the pass leads were that bad. No, I didn't think so. Yeah. So. And what I did like about the pass leads, what I noticed, I'll tell me if you all noticed this too, like if you got an underneath route, right, mm-hmm. and the guy's using the the – linebacker that's supposed to in his responsibilities in the middle of the field well if you got like a little in route or drag route and he vacates that area and you pass lead it up that shit was hot oh you were getting 10 yards on drags right away. yeah 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 Yeah, so i like the pass lead in that regard yeah it's definitely been something that madden it used to be like that i swear drags used to be have a better pass lead but yeah if you if you have a little coochie spot where you hit a drag or in route I mean, it's definitely yeah. getting 10 yards, I mean, you know, before the catch, really. You catch it at 10 yards yeah. and then right. and go up the field. So that's why one reason I was running tight a lot and putting two drags and just picking which one I get. I'm getting 10 yards while I catch it. So that's yeah. pretty much uh, was definitely something I did notice. So yeah. Well. On short stuff, the pass leading was great. Like, you could pass lead uh, you could pass the right way, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and you could allow yourself to get more. So I think I think shorter stuff, it was it was good. I think just some of the deep corners and stuff. I think some of maybe yeah. just a little different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, just it did feel different. different. It did feel different, no doubt. Yeah. I mean, well, at the end of the day, those those pass leads on deeper passes are harder throws, really. I mean, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. – I, I Yeah, that's one thing I noticed that Drew Brees uh, in the Pro Bowl game, he was doing flat routes and he was pass leading in flat routes for 10 yards before they catch it. So that was definitely right. huge. So, I mean, I, I think it's a good thing. But I, I think – these pass leads are something that it should be attribute related. You know, I shouldn't have that average quarterback throwing passes like that. I always thought, man, Brady should be the one that throws these 10 yard drags instead of two yard drags, pretty much, as opposed mm-hmm. to other quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see if that makes it the permanent. So, speaking of Brady, that's the person I want to talk about because that is the only quarterback that I used that I didn't really even switch because I thought. Uh, I hear people complain about the sheds. I will tell you with Tom Brady, the sheds were non-existent. I felt like I felt like I had all day on pretty much every pass play, every blitz. I did not ID the mic. I did not slide my line. I just blocked the running back if I thought a blitz was coming. And Tom Brady pretty much gave me all day. And on top of that, being able to put every single person on a hot route. And we're not even talking about, you know, wide receivers, but even tight ends getting deep crossing routes. Running backs yeah. getting angle routes on every play. Right. Running backs getting table routes on every play. I think Tom Brady absolutely was amazing. Uh, I yep. think he's pretty much, uh, as much as Michael Vick and Lamar Jackson were the only quarterbacks to play with, I think Tom Brady, I mean, for anybody that can play offense at all, I think Tom Brady would definitely be the move. I did not play with anybody else, so maybe I'm wrong. But, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Tom Brady was – it's it's hard to say Tom Brady was the best player in the game because, I mean, he's been the best player pretty much in the history of football – Really, when you talk about the best, you know, quarterback, the best player in football, it's Tom Brady. You know, maybe not necessarily now as he was, you know, five years ago or, or throughout the prime of his career, but this is probably the first man where we could say Tom Brady, I mean, is the best player and is looking to be like the best player. How do you guys feel about that? Right. You know, um, I feel like it's all he, he's definitely depending on who you he it, it, That's what I was saying. It's all about matchup because for a runner, he might. You know what I'm saying? They might want somebody more athletic, mm-hmm. more of a. But but for passers, I think I think it's great because like now I think it's way more pocket wise because pocket really matters a lot. And just for him to have every route, for him to be able to make receivers better, I think it's realistic. I think it's finally showing him in a light that he deserves to be in because that's what he does. Yeah, he doesn't get sacked a lot. Like you don't really see him get hit too often. So I, I think it's I think it's fair. Yeah. Okay, what you think? Uh I mean, I think they finally got it right and, and added some depth to the game. What this is talk what we're talking about with Brady is case in point is it, it makes you use Brady now. So mm-hmm. other than those abilities, there's no reason to use Brady. So because to your point, they make quarterbacks pretty much all play the same. Yeah. In years past, yeah, absolutely. so this now makes Brady play a little different, and I like Clef's point too. Like maybe it'll force people, depending on the, you know if they're running the ball and they want a little mobile quarterback, 
like now you have a little bit more options. There's more depth to the game because of this. So I'm all for it. And because I consider myself a passer, being mm-hmm. able to cook up the dots that I want to cook up versus searching through every goddamn playbook, every single formation to see what has a route that I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, it just makes the game more enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, I definitely had fun. Like you said, I mean, I, it was to a point where I didn't really matter what playbook I had. Honestly, yeah. if I had that crossing route or if I had that post route and then these sharp corner routes, you know, as long as, you yeah. know, I had Brady, I could pretty much do what I wanted. And I, I played I played my buddy Proof a lot, and he picked Aaron Donald. And he rushed four, rushed five, and I was just uh, – Tom Brady, it really didn't matter. I felt like the pass protection with him was, is unreal now. I, I think, I mean, as far as his type of chemistries and his type of ability, I think it's great for regs. I think all these abilities are great for regs. Now, I'm, I'm interested to see how they apply those to Mutt. Now, right. I think it could become a shit show when you put Tom Brady. Now he's able to hot route all the, you know, the bullshit receivers, the Philip Dorsets and everything, and, and, you know, the DJ Sharks from the, the Jaguars, all the budget wide receivers, he can hot route all those guys. But at the same time, you're paying to use Brady. But as far as I'm concerned, if they take – Mutt and maybe limited to you only get three superstars per each side of the ball, and you can kind of choose those before the game. Like if you want to change it next game, you can change which one you use. But I think that'd be a good way to try to limit not everybody having all these damn superstar abilities on you know on Mutt because look, look, as, as much as we want Regs to be a big deal, uh, Mutt will still be the main game mode that pretty much everybody plays. So I mean they have to find a yeah. way to balance. Yeah these X factors. So as far as I'm concerned, I think three on each side of the ball would be great. And then you can pick Tom Brady and maybe you can pick a running back and maybe a wide receiver or something like that. How do you guys think they should, how this will translate as far as Rays and then as far as Mutt is concerned? Uh, I think it's going to be, it, it's really hard to say as far as, cause I'm not a huge Mutt guy, but I think salary cap is going to change a lot. Is Brady going to cost cap? Is his abilities going to cost any cap? Yeah. Or is it going to be basically just come with the player? And if I want to use, say, because it's going to be people who want to use the Vic, the Lamar, the Mahomes, so are they going to have to pay extra to mm-hmm. get those certain abilities? Or are they going to have to put it on every, every single receiver? Yeah. I, so I think it's, yeah, I'm, it's definitely game changing. I, I think, I think, I don't think uh, Vic and Lamar Jackson should have the ability to hot route every receiver. Now, obviously, last year they let us pick whatever red chem we wanted. And um, will that, you know, I don't think an average quarterback should be able to get that ability. Maybe uh, Aaron Rodgers or, like I said, Phillip Rivers or Dan Marino, Joe Montana, whoever they come out with that was that good. Uh, those are the type of quarterbacks that should be able to get those abilities. But we'll see what they do. It might be ratings based. Or maybe if you have 95 awareness, you can, you know, make what, you know, wide receivers do whatever they want. So, uh, We'll see what they do. I just don't think everybody should have the same abilities. That's something that made, if you remember Madden 17, even I want to say Madden 18, only certain quarterbacks got conductor. You know, so not everybody was running out there with Michael Vick and the fastest quarterback available. Some people had Aaron Rodgers because he was mobile, but he could also have conductor. I think once they made it so every quarterback can get every chem, then it became, okay, let me just get the fastest one. There was no balance. So and that's, that, the same thing will happen if you can put this hot route everybody can on Michael Vick. He will just be the only quarterback. But if you make the, yep. the immobile quarterbacks able to, you know, just be the only ones to get these pocket protector and, and get these the hot route chemistries and stuff, they will be you know, the more used quarterback as far as, you know, competitive Madden is concerned, as far as I see it. You know, I don't know. Now, we're talking about the, the quarterbacks and everything. Did you guys run into any problems with Patrick Mahomes being too fast and that escape artist? Did it hurt you guys at all? Uh, not, not, I'm going to be honest. I didn't play him that much. I think I played it maybe. But so I didn't really have the sample size. Mm-hmm. To see, I used it. It was too overpowered. Just from what I seen, I didn't think it was too. I think it was. I mean, it's pretty much what he. I don't got a problem with people on a realistic level. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, th- I think it's pretty much how he plays in real life. So I didn't really have too much of a problem with it when I. Yeah, I went up against it quite a bit actually, and I felt like it was playing Mad 19 again on defense. Um, 
he just could get out of the pocket, extend the play, extend the play, extend the play. Um, but I, I felt like it was a little bit more easy to kind of corral him in versus what it felt like on 19. Now, did you did you try any of the contain, containing? Yeah, no, and I felt like contains worked. So that was one of the things that, you know, I, I went to to see, you know, is it going to work this year? And every time I went to a contain, it kept the guy in the pocket. Mm-hmm. But then, obviously, he still got all day to sit in the pocket now because I gave up two rushers. Yes. That is exactly how I felt. I felt I played one bazooka who was running bunch tight end, and he would just take this Mahomes and run out of pocket. At first, I said, oh, shit, Mahomes is out of pocket pretty damn fast. You know, that's what I thought. But uh, the next play, you just rush four. I did put the contains, which sacrifices your pass rush 1,000%. But as soon as he tried to get outside that tackle, boom, boom, he was definitely sacked. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I think a good balance, somebody that's you know, good at Madden, uh, be able to recognize contains and then hug the pocket and stay in the pocket, it could become difficult. But, I mean, ultimately that's what defending a mobile quarterback in real life is, difficult. You know, they're a pain in the right, ass, right. and it, right. it's going to happen. It's going to happen to the point where uh, it becomes a pain in the ass, and – I think uh, if maybe if you can get the hot route abilities, just use the hot routes on your wide receivers, then run with the mobile quarterback. It would definitely make a difference. Uh, but we'll see. As, like I said, as far as I'm concerned, is thinking about salary cap, thinking about mutt, thinking about what I can customize on my team. Is is the you know escape artist? Is that going to be a, a must have for me? So we'll see. But I did not think it was a big deal. I, I think I, he did look fast, like, on the screen. Like, damn, mm-hmm. he looks fast. But mm-hmm. I didn't think it was, oh, my gosh, this is unreal. I thought the brick, being able to bring down your icons and then use the running back moves, I think that's awesome. I think, I mean, I don't know why that was so hard for them to ever put in Madden before. You know, so right. to me. That, so I missed that. What was that? When you're in the pocket, you can click. I don't know what button it is because I had played with Brady L2, L2 right? And what will happen? Well, it will bring, it will take away the icons. So now you can run in the backfield like a running back. You can juke, spin, put the ball oh, down, all yeah. that stuff, and then hit L two gotcha. again and bring the icons back up to pass the ball. So gotcha. maybe between that escape artist, uh, it might come for some cool Madden. Maybe somebody will make a play behind the line where they spin, where they juke, and where they right. make a play. Uh, but see, so we'll see. I say this though, it's way more riskier in Madden. To be doing all that running the pocket. Well, because so, I, like, I think the the, the throw they can't throw the ball away because they wind up to throw the ball away. You're getting sacked. Yeah. So at least if, you know what I'm saying. Mad 19, you can just do it without any. You know what I'm saying without any punishment for it. But in Mad 20, it was real risky. to just be back there running around because you could fumble or you can't throw it away. Yeah. And it could change. Yeah, definitely because I mean we haven't seen quarterbacks fumble in the backfield. I feel like in forever, and and really right. as much right. as I wa- I've been watching a lot of throwback. I watch like the throwback uh, football NFL games, you know, like playoff games, everything. And I will tell you, the quarterback fumbles in the pocket in football. That that happens a lot, right. and uh, does not happen in Madden. I think it would suck if I'm on playing offense and I get sacked and I fumble. But um, a lot of times, dude, that's what happens in football. It's hard to you know keep take care of the ball, look downfield, climb the pocket, all that stuff at once. You know, so it, it could happen to players. And here's how I feel about the quarterback fumbling in Madden, right? Mm-hmm. If if to your point, if I'm sitting in the pocket and I didn't know where the blitz is coming from, and he comes right up the gap and just you know knocks me the fuck out, I should fumble the ball. That was something I could have controlled as a player. I could have set the protection better. I could have blocked somebody. I could have done something to prevent that. I could have got the ball out. Whereas after the catch, a lot of these times, you know, with the randomness with those fumbles, those are the ones that we hate to see in the game. But, like, right. the quarterback one, I'm okay with it. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll and it brings skill gap. It brings right. skill gap because now I need to make reads quicker or it's punished. I'm going to be punished. getting punished for it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Uh, I, I, I think the fumbling, the quarterback fumbling, is I think it's a good thing. Um, right. But people will bitch the same way they bitch on drags, fumbles, and it's going to be random. It's not going to be oh he got hit harder this play. The fumbles are going to be random. I think the fumble. How about the fumble outside the pocket should happen fifty percent more of the time than a fumble in the pocket. You know, mm-hmm. and, and you know, we'll see. I think between Brady, 
the running back fumbling, the, how hard it is for them to load up and throw the ball, which was a big deal that a lot of people complained about. Now, I will tell you, when I first played the game, I probably got sacked 30 times. I remember I played the Pro Bowl. was the first thing I played, and I got sacked probably. I, in the first game I played, I probably got sacked 20 times. And most of it was because I did not have Brady in the pocket, and I also was trying to throw the ball you know, 80 yards down the field. And Drew Brees took an hour to throw the ball. So I, as far when I played with Brady and I kept it to the flat routes, the drags, the corner routes, I didn't notice the throwing motion being that big a deal. I think that was the main thing that people uh, complained about the quarterback. But me personally, I did not think it was that big of a deal. I think I'm glad that it takes them, you know, five more seconds or whatever it is, another second, two seconds to throw the ball 80 yards down the yeah. field because people have been just launching that thing yeah. that far down the field for so long. And yep. this year, it's not going to be that easy. So, for me, I did not notice that being a huge problem. What about you guys as far as the pass, the, the wind-up? Yeah. I, especially with, like, okay, I think – because I play with Aaron Rodgers a little bit in practice, but it didn't seem as bad. For somebody like Tom Brady, of course, he doesn't have no arm strength mm-hmm. sort of say. So, those deep passes, any quarterback, really, those deep passes that are, like, 40 yards downfield and might be – 30 yards wide, like mm-hmm. two, so it's like a 70 yard. It takes time to make that pass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you can't just flick your and make that. I, and it gives the defense the time to react. So I like it. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't have any issues with the, with the quarterback wind up. Obviously, at first it was like, again, because you don't have the feel for it, it was kind of like, this is whack. But then you started to realize, like, all right, I got to actually, if I'm scrambling out, I got to like anticipate. Am I going to get open by the time this is going to get here and time that throw away up mm-hmm. versus just waiting until the infinite last second and getting rid of the ball? So I like that. Um, the wind-up for throws downfield I thought were done very well. Um, it, it should take a touch longer to throw the longer pass. Um, so I had no problem with, with the wind-up. Yeah. Chat, what about you guys? Did you guys like the wind-up? Did you hate the wind-up? Did you get sacked too much? Uh, did you get used to it by Sunday? Because for me, I, that's pretty much how I felt. I kind of got used to uh, the way they throw the ball, not be able to take the wild ass passes while I'm running around. Uh, I think that that'll save. I, I think a lot of the damage this year is going to be done in the pocket. You know, that's that's pretty much how I feel about it. And um, mm-hmm. shoot. yeah, that's we'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, the other topic that that well, you touched on a little earlier, Kent was pretty much about, we were talking about getting straight to the line right away instead of walking to the line, which uh, I can agree with Clef is that I used to love looking at the defense. I used to love looking at how they come out of the huddle, uh, how fast they base a line. You know, a lot of people would take a split second to base a line, and if they did that, you could kind of see what coverage they were in, you know, and uh, what play they called. Uh, so I thought there was a lot of skill gap in coming, seeing the defense come out of the huddle. Uh, and seeing who they were using, who they were clicking on. Sometimes you could see them click on a corner and back them up, and you could know, okay, maybe he's in a quarter, he's got a guard deep, and uh, or he's trying to prevent an outside streak or outside fade. So seeing the people that uh, defenders or defenders that people wanted to click on, I thought was something I I took into my head uh, as far as my pre-snap you know adjustments pretty much, and they took that completely away. Now they said I did. It was a problem until I was told there was a automatic baseline, uh, automatic baseline feature. I did not use that. So once I use that, I think it's going to be pretty good. Um, I think it's going to really be a good thing. But then we talked about the no huddle, automatically taking seven seconds off the clock. That's whether your man is when you ran four verticals where everybody's on the streak and, and need twenty seconds to run back, or you ran stick where everybody's on a little hitch route. You know, I, I think the one thing about no huddle, there was a difference in that before. You know, if you ran, you know, everybody down the field, it was smarter to go back into the huddle rather than call no huddle. You know, and if everybody did run stick, if you did run stick where everybody was right there to the line, you could no huddle and save yourself a little bit of time. But now it's pretty much the same same amount and you're taking automatic seconds off the clock. Uh, I think... Uh, I don't, I don't know how I feel really about it. I don't have that huge opinion on it. The one thing about no huddle that I used to love when I was playing defense 
if I'm playing defense and I got you no huddling, one, I feel like you're rushing. Two, when you no huddle a play, I have ten times as much time to make adjustments than I do if you're coming out of the huddle. So I feel like it's, right. when someone no huddles without this quick, you know, go right back to the line, I feel like that's kind of in my advantage as a defensive player. So I can make all the type of adjustments I want, uh, you know, rather than just, you know, get to the line the same amount and they can quick snap me. And also I ran into problems on a goal line. You know, a lot of people want a goal line no huddle to kind of mess up your alignment because we know alignment matters so much on goal line defense. And right. with this no huddle goal line, I would go from a quarterback sneak to a toss so fast, it, w- it was pretty obnoxious. So I, I don't know how you guys feel about the no huddle. Uh, let me know how you feel about that particular part of the beta. You know? uh, uh, the no huddle. I think it's, like you said, it, it, it hurts the defense more than it really hurts the offense because Somebody know huddling. I should I should be rewarded, and she should be able to get all my adjustments mm-hmm. saying and set up things instead of just that runoff. And it's hard hard to even recognize the no huddle. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to even recognize when it's coming because it kind of happens so. Yeah. It's, it looked the same. It looked the same as when he just picked his play off the huddle. You know what I'm saying? So it's hard to just kind of diagnose exactly what's going on. I, I as far as like just bringing no huddle back and letting us see the players run back to the line of scrimmage, stuff like that. Because, like, I might be running four verticals. Mm-hmm. I might be running shallow concepts. So I'm, maybe I can get my guys back to the line of scrimmage faster. It might have been a run play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it might have been a little run play, and then you're even closer to the line. You get back that much faster. Uh, right. Shoot. What about you, Ken? What you think about the snow huddle? Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of – there's pros and cons to it. Here's what I like about, like, the clock running off on the no huddle, right? It kind of amps up the situation because a lot of time when you're no huddling, it's at the end of a half, at the end of a quarter. Like, you're not just doing that in the normal process of a game. Like, mm-hmm. there's a reason why you're no huddling. So it kind of adds a little bit of a panic factor because you're having to kind of do a little bit of math while you're thinking about what play you're going to call, that kind of thing, right? So it adds a little pressure. So I like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as far as the speed of the no huddle, it's like we're running the Oregon offense out here in the NFL, and it's yep. it's too fast. So I think they're, if they can adjust that at all, maybe just slow it down a touch. Yeah. I mean, I did put one person at no huddle the whole time. Uh, and Clef said, it, is kinda, it does seem kind of similar to when you're calling a play, other than the fact you don't call a defensive play. That's pretty much the only uh, right. uh, thing. And I think it might, if it stays how it is, it might become a little bit of a strategy, especially with Brady, man. Yeah. You can just yeah. you can go ahead and, and run a bunch. Uh, just put a flat route, right. corner route, post route, and a drag. You can just quick snap that all the way up and down the field. You know, yeah. and a lot of defending bunches is mixing up your adjustments. And if you only have two seconds each time to mix up your adjustments, I mean, that could definitely be pretty tough to defend. You know? Oh, yeah. You about to play basic, you know what I'm saying? You about to be real basic. Yeah, real yeah. basic. And that's, yeah. uh, so we'll definitely see um, how that goes. Uh, I mean, I I think maybe just going right to the line out of play calling thing is going to be pretty cool. I think I think what they want to do is kind of they're running the problems, kind of how baseball's running the problems, and that it's pretty boring. You know? And and uh, well, that and they want to speed up the game essentially because you know it's easy to watch these shooting games with Fortnite championships and stuff because it's kind of high paced you know whereas Madden you have to invest 40 minutes to an hour to watch one game of Madden you know if they can cut that down to 30 minutes you know then maybe they can get more viewership maybe they can get more people interested in playing Madden you know or watching and it. and think about it from a competitive standpoint too that think about how many more games we're going to be playing throughout the ladders now because of this speed up that they've done. Yeah, I mean, it could get it to the point. Well, I will tell you, I played in Man 16 before the MCS. I was looking at the other day. I played 1,300 games of Mutt head-to-head. You know, I was proud of myself. And that's to let you guys know that I was grinding Man before it was even, you know, important to grind Man. I did it for the fun. You know, so, yeah, if there's more games to play Man, I definitely will be here for it. And, that, that, hey, it will be exciting. Uh, maybe the fast pace will attract more viewers. Maybe it will make the game more viewership friendly. Uh, we shall see. You know, uh, boom. Yeah, thanks, TK, for all the gifted subs, man. 17 gifted subs in the channel. 
that's a lot, man. I appreciate all your support. I appreciate all you guys supporting. Uh, I know it's the off season. I know Madden's kind of dead, but this Madden 20 has given us all life and thinking about you know what we're gonna do when the game comes out. That's one reason I did not want to play that much because now where we have like withdrawal. I don't want to play Madden 19 now at all. Really, I don't even want to look at that game. Uh, I'm just ready for the new one, and we got pretty much a month now. We're pretty much a month out from the new Madden, a month and maybe 10 days maybe to, for the new Madden. So I know everybody's excited, uh, and, and that goes to my, to my last topic that we have to talk about is pretty much uh, when you played, what did you do? And it came down to what do you guys, between you two and the chat, man, what did you guys think? will wind up being the main meta, you know, where there's been a bunch the last couple years and nickel 335. Uh, from the short time that you guys played the game, um, for me, personally, I, I played the little cluster thing. I ran cluster. looked really cool. It really did. I, I thought it, it has a lot of potential. It just doesn't have the deep corner route that bunch has, you know, and that's pretty much what came down to me saying bunch will pretty much be the only... <laughs> offense again you know because I, I thought to myself what offenses have uh the deep corner route because if you can't throw it over a cloud flat or you can't beat cover three with a streak in a, in a corner route then i mean why would i run anything else because i can do all the things i can do in cluster and bunch but i also right. have a deep corner route down the field and a wheel route and, and and base and just just other things like that so as far as i'm concerned after Playing for two two weeks, I think Bunch will also still be very good. Uh, I think it comes down to since because Brady gives you this little sharp post route that's very good, and the sharp corner route that's very good. You know, it comes down to what else can my formation have? Right. Because every formation now can have those good post routes, those a good corner mm-hmm. route, a table route, a crossing route. But how many formations will be able to have a deep corner route as well? Because those little hot route things did not give me a deep corner route. So that's pretty much you have to find the formation with the deep corner route because now you can add all those other things into it. So I think that's uh, so that's why it brings me back to bunch a lot. Uh, maybe a, some type of tight because I'll tell you, I think the hot routes for the slot receivers are better than the hot routes for the wide receivers. If, if, if for the split out wide, wide receivers, essentially. I think mm-hmm. those routes were kind of shitty as far as it was just like the post for that one is bad. And it was some, some other things I didn't like about the, uh, you know, the hot routes that the, the split out wide wide receivers got. I thought right. the slot wide receivers ones, they were geeked. You could have the post route, the corner route, and the crossing route, all three very good. So I think as many slot receivers as you can get on the field at once is a good thing. But then it's also nice to have that one solo receiver, and that's what Bunch has. Uh, so I think that's pretty much was still going to be very good. You know, mm-hmm. so what do you guys think as far as offense was concerned? Um, I think anything compressed, any anything with, with bunch in it, whether it's tight offset, tight flex, bunch cluster. I think I think bunch is the I think this year is gonna bunch is gonna be better than Yeah, I, I mean I could see that really. You know, but I think bunch is gonna be better than it's ever been this year. All the all the abilities you can do with with Brady, mm-hmm. and I think defensive wise, I think it's just Madden nineteen before the patch, before the second same patch. I think it's a, it's dollar is three three five aside. You know what I'm saying? I think it's that, that same thing. Yeah, I I think it, defense will always kind of be the same until they take out the um, nano detection. I think nano detection has ruined. Uh, defensive creatability, defensive labbing, uh, defensive uh, a lot of things. You know, before nano detection, I mean, everybody was looking for how to get my D lineman to come through the offensive line. That was pretty much defense. People would be in practice mode all day looking for stuff like that. And now because of that, it's pretty much just become all edge rush, all try, try to get somebody free off the edge. And that's pretty much all it's become. And I think a lot of the 3 through 5 late in the year was because of the contained blitz and because of just the tackles being so damn bad last year. You know, I, I think if you look at all the sacks, even at Pavin and his run in the club championship, if you look at all the sacks he got, it was pretty much the offensive line just being stupid. You know, and hopefully that that same setup and my tackle just standing there getting, you know, turned around will definitely not be a thing this year where you have to run a little bit different blitzes. But, but we'll see. I think nail detection really – 
I, I just think it's it's super bad and, and, and ruins the creativity on defense. As far as blitz is concerned, I still think there's a ton of, you know, coverage things you could do and lab up. But as far as blitzing, I think nano detection ruined that. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. Kent, what do you think about what do you think is going to become the meta? I'm with you guys. I mean, I think compressed sets, um, tight bunch, or there's a couple other formations where, you know, maybe you have trip. I think it's in Patriots book where you got trips on the one side and then like, yeah, like a little slot receiver on the left. Mm-hmm. Um, I think those are going to be used. I also think under center, again, provided that blitzes aren't OP, um, has a chance to come back. So, um, cause you know, you can get a lot pretty creative with a lot of those routes to the tight end and, and whatnot. So, yeah. So, I mean, I, but, I understand as far as under center for me, it is going to be as good as you can run the ball. You can't run the ball right. effectively. You should right. be in it. That's how I feel about it. Right. right. I, I felt like the run was pretty smooth. I liked, I liked how the run felt in the game too. Yeah. All right. I mean, some people said it was easy to run the ball. I mean, I, yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't run pretty much at all, uh, and I didn't really run and run up to anybody that was really running the ball. So uh, I don't really, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't be the one to ask about the running game. Chat was the running too easy. Uh, was it hard to stop the defense uh, or stop it on defense? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I felt like the run stick was a lot cleaner. I felt like it was easier to move my player. Uh, and that's definitely going to be a good thing. So, uh, as far as the run game, I was happy with where it was. You know, that's all. Yeah, I liked it. I was, I was cool with it. I felt like if I wasn't prepared for the run and they ran, okay, it's, it's going to pop off. But if I was set up for the run, I could stop it. Yeah. So, uh, I felt like it was pretty balanced. Okay. Yeah, I also think it's going to be something tight, I don't think. I don't think wide trips is the move anymore, man. I just, when it went, I don't know. We shall see. But uh, did you guys try any of these RPO situations, RPO plays they put in the game? I can tell yeah. you, I tried yeah. RPO. Now, I ran the RPO, and I tried to go to the slot, right? Because they ran, like, nickel blitz. So imagine running, I had an inside zone going right to nickel blitz, and then I had a bubble screen with two wide receivers on the side of the nickel blitz. So the nickel back was blitzing right off the slot. So, you know, I, I took the ball out. I do it to the bubble screen, right? Now, yeah. the blitzing corner jumped, picked it off, and took it to the crib. No lie. Wow. No exaggeration. And from that moment on, I say, I don't, that, that, that he probably will never run another RPO in his life. <laughs> that, and, and that is the one play I showed on stream. So if any of you guys watched me stream uh, Madden 20, that is the one play I did show on stream, the replay of that play. And I was pretty much like, this is, I don't think I'll ever run that again. So, did you guys run any of the RPOs? Uh, yeah, I ran one. I only ran one RPO, I ain't going to lie. And it was only on like the five-yard line. It was like the little stretch play with the bubble yeah. backside. Yeah. And uh, he only had one corner over two receivers. So, I, I, I pulled it out. I threw the bubble. And I, and I scored. So, I, okay. I liked what I saw, but I, ain't, I didn't keep to be honest. Okay, so you did a little real real, uh, real life. He only got one person over there. Let's block him and run into the end zone. Man, real physicality, man. Uh, that's all that was. Uh, yeah, that's, sometimes you got to do that. Sometimes your wide receivers got to be the most physical players on the field. <laughs> and, and that's what RP. What about you, Kent? Did you get the uh, – you're the type to see try to break down the yeah, RP. Oh, yeah. You seem like oh, yeah. a nerd. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah. You're excited I, about I like this. the okay. – uh, okay. I do. I, I think it's a nice little wrinkle. Okay. going to be a little, little chess match because what I was running – was the stretch away from a backside slant, right? Mm-hmm. And so, obviously, if you're controlling that user in the middle of the field and I see you commit on that run action, popping that slant. Okay. Um, but then, obviously, you know, there's going to be – you could get baited pretty easily on that. But the other thing I liked about those run plays is I felt like – and this is your first Madden 20 needed gaming tip of the year. Oh. I felt like – uh, run blocking was a lot better, and I could kind of control my running back after the handoff to make cuts into the right hole that I want to get through. So, okay, so you thought you, there you, you go. The, the running, the run stick was easier on RPO plays rather yep, than yep. regular run plays. Yep, there you go. Okay, there you go, so, everybody. So maybe that's why the RPO will have a place this year. You know, will be yeah. very successful. Jeez. Oh, that's pretty nice. Is there anything else you guys want to touch on as far as Madden 20? the beta is concerned i got i got one thing 
What's that? It's just, I feel like it's been too much com- going on for what? First of all, last year and 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 the year before that, man, eighteen too. It's been so much complaining of oh, I can't run in this formation. I can't be trade. Bunch has this. Bunch has that. Mm-hmm. There's there's a lot of formation, especially with Tom Brady. People complaining about Tom Brady. There's a lot of formations you can run now. You can have the same exact routes. And and for people to complain about that, it's just like you can't make certain people happy. Well, I, I just think I, I will tell you that you bring up two things that I want to talk about. One is that you're right, it was, but it's similar to route comes last year. You could say the same thing last year. Oh, you have all the route comes. You can run any formation, right? It's the same. It's right. the same argument. But okay, I'll tell right. you this: Why right. would I run this formation when I can have all those route camps in bunch and still have Pat Sale and still have Curl Flat and still have you know uh, clear out with the tight end post route? Why would I? And I can also add all those routes. So the same thing comes into this year. Okay, you can have Tom Brady, but I'll have Tom Brady and run bunch because I have an extra play. I have an extra corner route. I have something better than what you have in your spread with post routes and everything. So although you're right. That Tom Brady will make every formation better, but he even makes bunch better. So why not have the formation that's already good and make it better than have the shit formation make better? So it, I mean, as far as that's concerned, I mean, it's still gonna, regardless of how good Brady makes other formations and other makes you more creative, it's still gonna make the best formations better. And, oh, most definitely, yeah. most definitely. Another thing I didn't understand: everybody complaining about. Zone. I mean, I don't understand cloud flash. For example, like what what do people expect the cloud? It's right in the middle of a soft spot and a hard flat. Like it's gonna play right in the middle. Like so, if it has an out route, which is gonna suck up that cloud flat, and then a corner and something clearing it out. Like what do they want the cloud? I mean, that's a good question. What do cloud flats cover? Is that that should be a question? What do they cover? And I would assume for me, it's that quick. It's that quick corner route. They can cover that. Right. You know and. Maybe a slant if it comes back across the field. You know, if they're on the left and the slant comes from the right, it will cover a slant. Um, like a hit drag late, a drag that's thrown late or something. Yeah, it will cover a 10 yard curl, I guess, if it's right there. Um, uh, it's tough. I, I think. I, I was cool back in the day when it was purple zones and hard flats, you know. For me, it's what do purple zone does. That's the bigger question. What do like what do purple zones do? Is the bigger question. Okay. You know, because <laughs> we talk about flat zones, purple zones. I, I and I, you guys probably all agree. I love all the yellow zones. The four different type of yellow zones were awesome this year. I thought you could make them do a whole bunch of different things if you understood the yellow zones. Um, but as far as you know, the sideline zones definitely they could definitely um have a little tweak on the sideline zones. I think the yellow zones are definitely cool. Uh, but the sideline zones definitely were kind of ass. They've The purple zones, since they went to this three different flat zones, three different purple zones, the purple zones have been ass. Where pri- prior to that, purple yeah. zones were kind of geek. They're probably much better, uh, better the best zones in a game. And then they went to this cloud zone. Purple zones are irrelevant. Uh, so... But, I mean, clouds, we'll see. I, I, I didn't notice that they were that bad. Um, I thought deep blue zones, I think ever since Madden 16 and even Madden 17, I think Madden 16 where deep blues got reacted to everything, they've kind of made deep blues not react to anything. And, you know, and you can't, it was harder to, you know, bomb over the top. But in the same time, they, they don't really cover too much. And since 91 Zone, especially, 91 Zone made Deep Blues kind of cover things. But since then, last year, they were kind of ass Deep Blue Zones. And I felt the same way in playing Man. So I thought Deep Blue Zones were ass. You know. I didn't have... I don't know. I see a lot of people complaining about that. And I see a lot of people kind of on the flip side of that. And I'm on the flip side. I didn't... I felt like if you were going to throw at something deep, like a deep corner route or a deep crossing route, I, I had the chance to click on and go get it, and, right. did, and did so a lot. Um, so I guess I don't. I'm not real sure which a deep blue zone, anything deep, it should cover, right? So if you're expecting them to jump 
yard routes that are you know ten yards under. I I don't know what you want out of them. Yeah, I, I don't. I, yeah. I honestly didn't think it was that terrible, really. I, just... right. I mean, they plan over. That's what they. I mean, they plan over the top, and then they try to break on things underneath them like a corner. I didn't. I didn't think it was, you had time to react with the quarter. Yeah. So we'll see. I and one thing I I really refrain on doing. I saw a lot of people do like really kind of try to you know make a. a a really strong opinion about what the game is going to be, what the game is, you know, based off, you know, 20 hours of playing it, you know. So for me, I was never the one to really want to jump to any type of deci- any type of conclusions. I saw a lot of people doing that, jumping to conclusions of what the game is going to be like. So uh, that's something I don't want to do, and, and I'm really ready to play it. More, more than anything, playing the game for 20 hours made it. Super excited for the game, super excited to get, you know, in the practice mode would have been great. Um, that would have been fun. Yeah. You know. Yeah, the, the, the lack of practice mode. I, I probably might have sat in practice mode the majority of the time if it was on the beta. But oh, I, for I sure. didn't get to play a lot. Uh, well, I probably played 10 games myself. I did not play that much. And, uh, you know, what about what do you guys think about the abilities for all the other players? Were there any other players other than Brady that pretty much stood out as being great on the field? Uh, uh, Aaron Donald. No, 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 no. I gotta say him first. Todd, the stiff arm. Yeah, spin, yeah, yeah. That was probably the next best thing to Brady, in my opinion. Yeah, Todd Gurley was good. He was tough to bring down. And so, so they went with like regular season Todd Gurley, not playoff Todd Gurley, right? Yeah, regular season Gurley. Oh, they had regular season Gurley. Yeah, okay. not hurt Todd. You know. Oh. oh, he was hurt? Oh, he was hurt? Oh, okay. Cameron Jordan. Yeah, I mean, and this is why I tell you, man, this is why I think those X Factors will be great for regs. It will make a lot of teams usable. It will make a lot of players stand out that didn't stand out before. Uh, I'm just really interested on how they incorporate that to Mutt. I, 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 think, it, I think how they incorporate it to Mutt will, will make him break the year. You know, if it's too much, yeah, it's going to be agree. shitty. It's yeah. going to turn into Mad Nineteen, and it's going to be our. It's going to be Yu Gi Oh way too much. Yeah, and, I, I, I'm with you. We touched on it earlier. I think I'm worried about how much salary cap and all that stuff is going to go down. But if it stays consistent with regs, like you alluded to earlier about like Madden Seventeen and Sixteen, where you know you Aaron Rodgers has his ability. Gurley is the only unique back, so all the Gurley Mutt cards that get released will follow his traits, but just be a little bit better version of himself every time. Like, I hope that's the route it goes versus I can just pick up the fastest player and, and chem him out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that, I mean, that that's what I hope. I hope they find out the perfect way to incorporate X factors into mutt. Cause really, uh, if you think about, even look at the side cap teams, there's probably 20 X factors on each team, you know, like how ridiculous right. are they going to make it? Uh, we'll see how it works. You know, but we'll see how I got faith. I got faith for him this year because I'm from. I'll say that they made great leaps and strides just in the beta from from like the last year beta. To, it's not at least the game, game wasn't completely just all over the place. You know what I'm saying? It, it was more consistent with what was going on. The fumbles weren't crazy. I think. Yeah, I, I didn't think the fumbles were bad. I thought I, I returned 400 kicks with Patrick Chung. I probably fumbled four of them. Oh, no, I probably fumbled a lot, actually. But it was Patrick Chung. I didn't feel like anybody else really fumbled that badly. <laughs> Patrick Chung yeah, Patrick. shit on that return, I'll tell you what. Yeah, Patrick, <laughs> three players, and Wesley, for some reason, Wesley knows stuff like this. I mean, you'd think they would just tell Madden Champion stuff like this, not you know, not... <laughs> Not mad and try hard, stuff like this. So, you know, I mean, three players on each side of the ball, I think would be perfect. You know, uh, so I, I think it would be perfect. As far as I, I saw the corner stand, I saw Gilmore stand out. That's the only player I played with. Yeah. yeah I thought yeah, he was yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah. So it would be interesting if someone put three X factors just in the secondary. Um, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. I think. I think they're just going to add something to the team. 
another thing to think about. You know, do I want to put you know two X factors at, at the end, you know, and run you know some type of shed defense, and then use a uh, maybe one X factor in the secondary, maybe one my free safety, make him a goon, make my two edge rushers goons, and then I'll, I'll be cool from there. You know, we'll definitely see how that works. And as far as offense, you put Brady back there, and make, put so you put Brady and Ty Gurley and, and go to work, pretty much. Let them make plays. Yeah. Right. We'll see. I'm definitely really excited about it. Um, we got about a month, probably four weeks, four or five weeks, until this game is underway. So it is a busy five weeks. Um, is there anything else you guys want to add to your reaction to the beta? Um, man, I just hope just just to just the community. I just hope we don't overreact. Just don't be. We we can't be just so overreacting or, or in the moment to the point where the, the game get changed a lot. You know what I'm saying? Have patience. Stay calm. Stay poised and let everything play out instead of us jumping the gun and get the game. Yeah. And then we have December. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it goes to like the patches. Like, how are we going to? How are they going to patch the game? What are we going to complain about to try to get them to patch? You know, I think that's that's going to become. And our patch is a good thing. Our, you know, I, <laughs> we'll see. I mean, I think part of. As much as, as you know, the, the deeper I get into Madden and, and learn more about the games being made, I think a lot of it, and, and, and as far as more I get into business, and, and as far as that, I realize how much people do things just to sell stuff, you know, just to get attention. And I think some of the patches <laughs> that it adds to that, you know, try the game now, we fixed it, you know, I think that adds to getting people to play the game. And, and the more we have to realize that we are not part of who they target because. But regardless of how shitty this game is and, and, you know, how bad it is, whatever it may be, we're going to play the game like hell. You know, well, me and Clef are. Kent, you know, he might stop at Thanksgiving, mm. you know, after he spends mm. 10 years <laughs> on his mutt team. But me and Clef are going to play the shit out of the game. And everybody in the podcast, in the chat, watching on YouTube, you, we all going to play the shit out of the game. So we have to realize when they're in the meetings and between patches, when we're they're thinking about making patches and they're thinking about mutt, they're thinking about fixing the game, they're not thinking about Clef and W and the Needy Podcast community. They're not. You know, that's really not the concern. They want little Jimmy playing the game because little Jimmy uh, equals money, you know, and they, they that's why they, they tune to his attention. That's why I'm telling you the Disney era is alive and well. Only children had this attention deficit disorder to the point where it's, I want my offense coming right out of the huddle right away and snapping the ball rather than watching it get to the line. Us grownups, you know, us 30 plus, you know, we, we were cool with while taking that little break. You know, the one thing I always said about Madden, it's an easy game to stream. Because in between every play, you can look and talk to the chat. Now, I feel like I don't have that anymore. I'm pretty much locked in. I'm pretty much got to catch my breath every game, and it's driving me crazy. You know, there's nonstop. So I hope you guys will definitely enjoy the nonstop action. I hope it's something that, I mean, you guys want. But, you know, like I said, they're not targeting me and club. They're targeting, you know, the little Johnnies of the world pretty much. Let me see. All right, well, I mean, is that is that all you guys feel, man? It's all I got, man. No, okay, but, like, so, uh, what was I say? So, 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 Kent, you're back this year. Are we going to earn any MCS points this year? I think so. I, I, th- I think it's going to go down. I think all you have to do to earn MCS points is qualify for a tournament. You could even qualify for, like, the online portion of a, t- of, of a club tournament, which is easy. Okay, okay. Vilma has done yeah. that. Uh, proof has oh, proof geez. lost in the finals of a club championship. Are you better than proof? Oh my god, yes. Okay, are you better than Vilma? That's not even like that's disrespectful to even ask for that. But all these guys have earned MCS points. EA sent them an email with their beta code. You had to ask for beta codes. <laughs> so, uh-huh, so, uh-huh. so, so, yeah. so we're expecting Kent. Uh, that's our whole goal in Mad 20 Kent to win MCS points. Even Rumble has made live events. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's bad. It hurt. It, I, it, it, this honestly hurts my soul that the people you're talking about actually got points. Yes, like, they got points. They've made runs. Yeah. You know, they actually yeah. Rumble's been flown to two different live events. 
Rumble. Yeah, that blows my mind. Yeah, see? Rumble is really... <laughs> like, you really are... The, between you and Elite, you guys are, like, low on a totem pole of, of OG they, squad. Come on now. Come on now. You guys, come on you guys now. are low on a totem pole. It's okay. I mean, shoot. That's just I'm all right. I'm all right. So this is... I'm, I'm, I'm changing up my tactics this year. Like, I'm going to play dumb as hell. Okay. And I'm going creep gamer tag. Why? I'm creeping Why would you shit creep out of everybody. Say? I'm creeping on everybody Why would this you do year. That? Because like, that's the way. Why? That's what everybody else is doing. I don't know who the hell I'm playing. They're not going to know who they play. Well, listen, that's Chad, all I'm you guys are going to know you're playing dub dot w every single time you load up right. a game. You want to see me? You want to see that name? You want to start shaking? You hear me? I ain't going to be. I going to be Larry <laughs> Larry Livestock on the other end of the game. You, know, you guys are going to just don't need no creep. Yeah, don't need a creep. That's for children. You know what I'm yeah. I'll, hey yo. Hey yo. I'm going to be tweeting every dub that I get on these guys that do have these names that pop up because they want to be flexing like, oh, this is dub.w. Best believe if I beat dub.w, screenshot, it's going on Twitter. Okay, so for me, for me, I feel like, all right, I understand that, but that has more pressure for me. I'm saying I like the pressure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm saying mm-hmm. champion mm-hmm. champions are, are born in the pressure, Kent. You know I'm saying if you don't if you don't have, you know, the, the shoulders to be able to withstand the pressure of playing on your gamer tag. Go ahead and make a creep. I'm saying you're not really yeah, built for that yeah. moment. You know I'm saying me myself. <laughs> I'm saying I'm built for that. that that's why I'm. I will see. You know I'm saying you, you. You might just be a, a couch champion. You know I'm saying, but okay. But you okay, at least, we'll see. if you can't what? qualify for, t- listen, I tell you, if you can't qualify for a tournament, that's embarrassing. It really, okay. is. especially when one where okay. they put it like the top 128. I'm like, what? That one's pretty obnoxious. If you can't make that. Yeah, first of all, I made all that shit. So what do you? I mean, what do you do to make? Shit, I, I'm always in the top, whatever to to, make, to qualify for whatever. You remember it is. that your guy Tracy McBrady? Where is that? <sighs> Chat. Somebody bring. Somebody find the Tracy McBrady. Somebody saw the, found the Pavin clip from Donnie Moore uh, <laughs> after he won the club oh, series. Somebody God. has to find the Tracy McBrady clip. <laughs> <laughs> that hurt. That seriously hurts my soul. Yeah, you lost to man. That that he was a killer. You know? He was killer, man. He was killer. He came out. You know, he set the tone. He shouted out his people. You know what I'm saying he was like, "This is my squad. We did it." Yeah. He like like it. I. He said we I, did I felt it. good about that. Yeah. I felt good that he was like that. At yeah. least he was a stand up guy. Yeah. You know, brings his people with him type of thing. Yeah. So you know, I couldn't hate on him after Brady. I saw that. That's Tracy McBrady. You know what I'm saying, and I yeah. will tell you. Yeah. After Man Bowl, I was able to say five words, and then they took the mic away from me. All right? And all I did was uh-huh. thank my mother. All right? Then that's all I did. Uh-huh. All right? And then my, every, all my Twitter and everything got deleted and everything, so it got really dark for me. It was a dark couple <laughs> couple weeks after that, you know? So I was not the same person as I am today. And now okay, okay. I give you this platform to talk to people that don't know who you are. You know what they say, what the chat says? Who is that other guy? And you have become that other guy now. See, people know you. I'm you know what I'm saying? Exactly. See? See, I got the creep keep creep gamer tag already in, in motion. Okay. 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 Any, <laughs> any cre- have you been tossing around any creep ideas? Well, let me hear some creep ideas that you've tossed up that you're not going to No, 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 no. I, there's only one. What's the one? you? Oh, there, one. And you got it already? You already got the creep? I'm all, it, it's, it'll, be, it'll be available. Okay. Okay. You'll, you'll know. You'll know. Yeah, I believe it. I definitely believe it. Um. All right, so is there anything else you guys want to add? Clef, man, uh, so so Madden 20 is the Clef God's year. That's how you felt from the beta? See? Yeah, definitely Clef's year next year, for sure. Guaranteed. <laughs> Jesus. No, but it's going to be Ken's year. He's going to make he's gonna make a tournament. Are we going to get some Madden streams next year? Like, what's up? Yeah, well, no. Nah, look, I feel good. I feel like, yeah, it's... It, Definitely. It's definitely the uh it's definitely clutch here. You feel good on this man twenty? I feel I don't feel good on every Madden I don't touch though. Nah, yeah, so all you right. know what I'm saying? Say no more. But we gonna see. But you might run into to, to Kent Kent from Kent from uh Michigan on there. Uh, you might run that might be his, his creep name, Kent from Michigan. <laughs> that's kind of a hell that's kind of a hell creep name right there. Kent from Michigan. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I understood a creep. Some people deserve a creep, uh, because and, and Skimbo has a, Skimbo is the, the creep god, right? And he tells me if I if I if I play under Skimbo, no matter what I do, people think it's hot and people will run it. Even though it sucks, people will be like, "Oh, this is what Skimbo runs, I'll run it." 
So if he plays under Bazooka Larry and plays, people won't try to steal his stuff and it won't get out there as fast. Which, I mean, it makes kind of sense. But me, myself, as a Madden content creator and a Madden personality, I think it's imperative for me to continue to play on my name because, I, I listen, I don't have my gamer tag for 12 years now. I mean, I'm not, not going to play on it. So that's definitely uh, what I'm going to do. But that's a topic I believe we've already had on this podcast in the past. But uh, topic for another yeah. time. You know. It's like LeBron going out there with a costume on, man. Exactly, you know Clef. See? LeBron, LeBron, be LeBron. Exactly. See? There you go. That's, that's a great point, man. Why would LeBron wear a kind of really? nose and glasses and stuff? You know? yeah, I'm, looking, I'm looking at it from the Uncle Drew standpoint. So, you oh, know, you, so, oh, you want to be Uncle Drew and pop up? I'm Uncle showing Drew. up. Everybody's like, okay, I'm going to take this guy a little light. And then, oh, shit. <laughs> oh. oh, my gosh. You can't. Your, boy, your boy Krill is in the chat and says you suck. That, that, that's what I heard from he, Krill. He knows the deal. Like, like he knows what what the real deal is on like, that. I feel like you and Krill are so old. Y'all probably had a lot of battles in the past, and I don't know. If you ask me, Krill might be over you. I think. No, no, no. Ask Krill. Ask Krill. If he, he even believes that. No, I, I, I think Krill actually qualified for some tournaments and stuff. I'm saying. So I don't mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Well, he wasn't getting any juice off of this guy. Oh my gosh! Picture that. Okay, we need some streams. That's, that's what I. This year we need some Madden streams. You know, you get your little, your little when your wife allows you to play from like six to seven. You get your one, <laughs> one Madden game in, and then you go, go yep. to date night. You know what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. I, I don't understand yep. why you wouldn't see. That's what I mean. Like, I remember Kent got all the streaming equipment. He want to play Fortnite and kind of ass, <laughs> right? Rumble had all the streaming equipment and he disappeared. You know I'm saying Vilma just play all day but don't stream. I'm saying, I, I would see when you have all this plug, you know what I'm saying, as it's to me, you, I can give you all the hosts in the world. You could be like, in this part of the year, you could probably be like a top five man streamer if you tried, but see, right, you know, right, right, yeah, listen. yeah, you know, I can't, I, 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 listen, you can only bring the horse to water, man, you can't make him drink. That's pretty much how I feel about everybody. So that's I, facts, you know, that's all. If, if the horse not thirsty. It's hard over Clef for, for Kent because he's rich already. You know what I'm saying so to me, it's like <laughs> when you deal with rich people, they really not hungry. You know what I'm saying they eat and enough. Oh, you know what I'm saying so that's pretty much between Clef, between uh no between Kent and Rumble, they rich man. They ain't worried about shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they got families and stuff. You know what I mean? I don't really can't really worry about that. And, and Krill said he got all your juice. By the way, Kent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Krill versus Kent might be a matchup. It ain't a matchup. Bro. They won. <laughs> they won pay per view. Yeah, I might have to boot up right now. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Curl versus Kent. Day one. What's up? Is, is that it? I'm, I'm about it. Oh, I'm about it. Oh my gosh. I think Curl might might wipe the floor with you day one. Curl's a day nah. one type. You know I'm saying he not. No. Nah. He don't wait around type. Sorry. Hey, Curl. Curl's tough. He just ain't tougher than me. That's all. Oh. Right, that's gonna be a day one match of the people are waiting to see you versus uh Krill for everything. You know what I'm saying, all right, let's do it. All right, so uh, that's all you guys had to add to the beta discussion. You know what I'm saying, that's it. All right. That's it. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. I can't wait. I'm definitely looking forward to it as well. Um, ready to play, ready to get back in the practice mode. And, and as Joe Rice has told me that there was practice mode, but he's such a goddamn virgin that he went into franchise mode, then went to franchise mode practice on the beta. I will never be that big of a loser that I had to search through, practice, through through franchise mode to get the practice mode. Like, Jesus. Like, just picture picture that. Like, you got to have something better to do in life. But they might, you know, they might not. So, you know, God bless my man Joe Rice. Uh, but if that's all you guys had to add... You know, I appreciate you guys coming by the podcast talking about the beta. I mean, I really wanted to get some other people's opinion. We also have our clef as our professional player. We want his profession and our amateur player and Kent. We want to both of y'all opinions, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they matter. You know, Kent, one day to realize EA is catering to you, man. You got to make it. It's your time to, to, to turn up one time. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. Jeez. Oh, my gosh. All right. All right. I'm out. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys, and I will stay in touch. Back, dude. All right. All right, chat. 
it is time, man. I just have these. I just have these fracture me. What's them called? I definitely have the. Uh, let me see if I can show you these these things right here, man. Yes, I can. Okay. Now this is what you know. They they reached out to to the W man. I said, you know what? We want to work with you. I said, all right, cool. Now you see this nice couple right here. You see. This might be, a, that's a Kiv type, you know what I'm mean, saying? With, you know, his little chick. This could be you guys. You know, and this is all you got to do. This is what we're going to give away. And this is what it is. Our products. Boom. They they print your pictures on glass. That's, that's pretty much what they do. You know, whereas people, uh... Where most people just have pictures on the internet and stuff like that. These guys will actually pin, print your pictures on glass. You know what I'm saying? This is definitely how it works. Boom. We transform your digital images into frame glass, frameless artwork print directly on glass. What that means is the pictures will hang right on the wall. I'm saying that's it. That's pretty much it. Look, transform your digital images into frameless artwork printed directly on glass. That's all. That's the entire thing. You know what I'm saying I did put this tweet out about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah. So uh I will give away these these whatchamacallits. I will do these in the chat, man. If y'all what I have is I have a hundred and fifty I think I have a hundred and thirty five dollar gift card. I have a hundred dollar gift card and I have a fifty dollar gift card. Now this is what we'll do. Come on. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Uh, Nightbot. Boom. So let's see what we got, man. Because I know, I mean, listen. I didn't think this thing was that cool. Then I actually got some. I'm like, all right, this shit is cool. Got a bunch more. Uh, giveaways. That's what we're gonna do. Once I got a bunch more, I was like, "Yeah, I really need to get some more of these." We're gonna get this to everybody that's in the chat right now, man. I'm gonna start with the fifty dollar, fifty dollar court fracture. Is it? No, it's an F. It's an R. What link? Oh, that one don't work anymore. But yeah, that's what I want you guys to type in the chat, man. Fracture me. One word. Type this in the chat. Type that in the chat to be eligible. All you guys are eligible for the giveaway. Type that in the chat. You know what I'm saying? Get a hundred dollars at least, you know what I'm saying? Nothing wrong with it. You get, and honestly, these things are super tough gifts. That was probably the best gift I ever gave my girl. Gave her a picture of me, me and her. You know what I'm saying? She loved it. You can get for your girl, your mom, everybody. It's always the thing like, what do I get my mom for Christmas or her birthday or something? You don't know what to get her. This is the perfect thing, man. 39 people. Can we get this to 50 people eligible? Uh, the biggest frame, the biggest frame as we look. Let's look on here. Where is it? Here we go. Get started. Let me pick a photo. We're going to put Siwoo. You know what I'm saying? This is, is going to be our photo right there. And then, all right, so that's our picture we want, right? With the dog and the hairline. That's what we're going to get, right? Size selection. All right. Now, these are unavailable because, <laughs> because they're so damn, because the picture is so bad, right? But as you see over here, this is the pricing. The small one, this is six, six and a half inches by five inches. That's twenty dollars. I have a five by five one that was fifteen bucks, and it comes right on glass. As a matter of fact, these things are right here. I'll show you guys. This is my five by five one. I'm saying right here. This is me and my boys when we went to the Eagles tailgate, and it's just it's on this plastic right here, right? It's just glass. I don't even know if you guys. Here go a fork right here. Literally on glass. There's no frame involved. There go the thing. 
it comes with this screw goes right into the wall and you hang it up boom or you keep this around this could honestly probably be a coaster pretty cool you know what i'm saying and it was just certain things like that that i wanted to keep and make sure i did not get deleted on instagram or anything like that you know what i'm saying so that's why i got the first one and let me show you all this one this is the this is the main so that one was 15 bucks right there this one right here the super bowl at the super bowl this is a bigger one. This was probably, I want to say, like the classic size. This was 70 bucks. this bigger one. Printed on glass, hang up the same way. So like I said, type those in the chat. Where's my giveaway at? Oh, there I go right there. Boom. All right, we have 43 eligible users. I'm going to flip. This is for $50 holler right here man we're gonna roll it my man cabo following since january 4th 2008 cabo that's 50 dollars to get a picture man cabo my guy i'm gonna whisper you right now boom i just whispered cabo as you see me whispering these are the people i follow Boom. All right. Next, I'm going to roll another one just from these people. Hope you guys are still in here. Let me just roll another one. My man, Don't Blink, following since August 3rd, 2018. Don't Blink. Check in, Don't Blink. No, 2008. Did I say 2008? Don't Blink. Check in. That's $100, Don't Blink, that you just won. Andre crazy. Andre gets banned during podcast mods. Only during regular streams is he allowed in here. Don't blink. What's up? Check in. Don't blink. Can I get a check in? Check in. Check in. Is he still in here? Hundred dollar holler. Hey, my guy. Don't blink. There he is. All right, now we're going to do the $135. What the $135 will do, it's going to make, that's, you can get the biggest picture that they have. So if you want a big ass picture, you know what I'm saying? Some, some quality of picture, you can't really get it on there, but you know, we can go ahead and, we're going to roll it one more time for the $135. My man, Tyler Durden, my guy, man. I'm glad you won this. Tyler been in here following since December 6, 2016. Since 2016? Any of sub, Tyler, my guy, $135. You can get the big frame or you can get two, three different frames. Really, that's dope. Bang. I'm glad you won that joint. Bang, there it is. Definitely, I'm glad I'm starting working with some of these companies. Uh, they find interest in the podcast, interest in me as a streamer, interest in me as a personality. So it's definitely a good thing going forward, man. But uh, this is what's the beta. We probably got, shoot, another month. Like I said, another month till Madden comes out. A lot of different things to talk about, man. Not going to break down any games today. I mean, talking about the beta was enough. Uh, I was joined by Clef the God and my man Balling You Up. Uh, so, like I said, you can click the link below, man. You can get some Harry's razors for the low. They keep my head nice and smooth. You know what I'm saying? Actually, I did not shave since yesterday, so my hair is a little bit longer today, as you can see. But I might have to shave it. Uh, got some big news coming up these next two weekends, man. Big things happening these next two weekends. So make sure you guys follow me on Twitter, man. That's where everything will go down. Also on Instagram as well. Make sure you do that. All them links are below in the description. Also below in my tags or whatever they're called. My banners below the Twitch stream. Check all those out for real because... Big things are happening in the next two weeks, man. Big moves for me and Needed Gaming. I uh, hope you guys tune in. I appreciate you guys tuning in for uh, the Needed Podcast. This was episode 35. 35 straight weeks of talking about John Madden football and you guys watching. So I appreciate all you guys coming through, man.